Well, hello, this is Peter Combs from Bitamount.com and PL Combs Asian Art in Gloucester, Massachusetts. And today is Friday, of course, it's June 16th. And we're going to take a look at, back at last week's eBay auction results <clears throat> and talk briefly about a couple of other things that are going on. In case you missed it, earlier this week we put up a, uh, a new video on Ming uh, incense burners. We, we had never done one on bronzes, and we thought it would be fun to do one on Ming examples. So uh, check it out on the YouTube channel here, and you'll see it. Um, one of the things that we did do this week also is we're always adding things and trying new things. And this was something we added um, onto the newsletter page and on another page over on the site navigator page is uh, this, news and events. And if you click on that, it's going to bring you over to this page. And uh, what we set up was uh, an area for upcoming sales um, in, uh, in and around the world. This is a sale at Tijan's that's happening on the 19th. Christie's, in, in Paris, that's in Paris, and Paris Christie's is also having a sale on the 20th. They, they always coordinate a bit there. And both of them are called Arts of Asia sales. And Bottoms has two nice sales coming up in San Francisco on the 27th and the 28th, respectively. So uh, they're on there, and we've added some uh, links on here to some pretty good, uh, very, uh, rather active uh, Asian art and culture news sites. Uh, so check those out. One of them we also added was, we had never put it on, we should have, we kept overlooking it, was the Asian Art Museum Online Collection. They have some great things for you to look at and uh, study and uh, play around with the photos. All right, so check that out. Now on to eBay. Um, this was a, a pair of vases that we came up with that we came across last week. A nice looking, very unusual color. Very nice soft powder blue uh, enameled vases with butterflies and flowers all over them. Very attractively done. Um, when I first saw them, I was kind of surprised. It was, it's, it's an unusual palette to come up with two. And uh, I checked them out and uh, here are the bottoms of them. They look all right to me. Nice old uh, turquoise uh, glaze on the bottom. Good looking handles here and here and here. Nicely done. Um, they're the bottoms, but, but they're probably late 19th, possibly early 20th century, but uh, beautiful quality. And they brought $2,950, which I think was a perfectly um, uh, uh, fair price. They had no chips or repairs. They were in good shape with stands. The other vase that we had on here last week was this large vase. This was almost two feet tall. Uh, very unusual um, um, uh, elements on this thing. It has the nice floral vase, the flowered vase at the uh, mouth at the top. And then these upside down ibexes. You see them occasionally, we've seen them before, but uh, I like them. I think it's a nice change from the standard chimeras you might see on there or the foo dogs. And uh, good quality decoration all the way around. Here's a shot of the, some of the brushwork. Uh, they did a good job with, it, with this vase. It's a eight, probably 1850 to 1880s vase. And uh, had big, big, sh the guy called it Mei Ping 1800 Imperial. It wasn't, you all know where it came from, but what period. But uh, about $3,000 with a $220 shipping bill. Um, it's coming out of Australia, and unfortunately, Australia is very hard to ship into and ship out of. They, they're very tough on packages. Um, they've got a lot of programs to pay for down there, so they're hitting everybody on their postage. Uh, and then there was this lovely pair of uh, coral ground um, uh, cups, wine cups. Um, nicely done. The, this is a type that you see, you know, normally this, was a, this style was actually originated in the Kung Shi period and uh, went on to become very popular after that, obviously Chen Lung and so forth, and they continued making them. This cup did have a hairline in it and it had some uh, rubbing to the interior enamels and so forth. There were the bottoms, but nonetheless, they did great. They brought uh, um, $1,580. That's nothing to complain about. It's a perfectly good uh, uh, price. This particular seller had another item up that's coming up later on that did really well this week. And then there was this pair of vases. I love these vases. Uh, they caught my eye. I like the shape. It's, as you know, the, you've seen a lot of vases. It's a Kung Shi style with the uh, ring necks and nicely, nicely molded uh, um, um, onto, onto the top there and well shaped. And I like the decoration. A nice mirrored pair of a, of a maiden with a child. Uh, very good quality. Here's the foot rim. And they were inscribed, and they were dated 1924. Uh, very Republican, very elegant, and they were big. This is the thing, is that they didn't look that big in the pictures. Most of these vases in this style are, uh, um, you know, 8 to 12 inches. These were big vases. They were 18 inches tall, and they went very reasonably, $990. All right, they were 45 centimeters in height. And uh, I think that was a fabulous buy for a, for a buyer or a collector of Republican porcelain. 
and I, and I, I, have no, I don't have any doubt that they were old. Um, and then you have this uh, nice looking, very good looking pair. I love those like melon jars. It's a good looking round um, uh, Famille Rose melon jars, the 19th century. Uh, very interesting sort of evocative court scene in it. Um, they are a mirror pair. And uh, they did fine. They, 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 there's always a market for these melon jars. They're very decorative. $1,355 for them. And they were in excellent condition and they had their original lids, which is crucial with these. Often you see them with no lids because they were frequently made into lamps and they would throw, excuse the truck going by. Wow. <laughs> we have the windows open here today and we're in the downtown Gloucester and get loud sometimes. At any rate, this was a, a, a great buy. This was a, a, a very nice solid on uh, Korean bowl, early one, Chosan period. Um, beautiful quality. Uh, had some of these, I love these, had some of these charming old, had this sort of irregular rim. That's not damaged, that's just the way the thing was made. Um, but it had the very attractive go lacquer repairs that you often see on Korean and Japanese pieces in particular. And, uh, but a good early bowl. And if you're an early porcelain or pottery collector, a nice, a nice inlaid celadon bowl uh, uh, went by last week for 102 bucks. All right, we had it in the newsletter, so you know if you didn't bid on it, I'm, I'm sorry you missed it. Um, and then there was this 18th century, very attractive, well done, uh, circa 1775, Famille Rose gilt handle and spout uh, export teapot. Nice looking example with the Rococo cartouches around the top and these rather attractively done, uh, very soft palette uh, landscape scene with women, women standing by a balustrade and, and men carrying a, a basket on a, on a stick and so forth. Uh, nice looking little pot. And it did well, it brought uh, $636, which is a good price for that. Um, but I think it was well deserved, nice looking thing. And uh, this, oh, this, this was something we sold. This came out of the Hillard collection in Michigan. A beautiful little tunchy uh, uh, blue and white bowl. I love the decoration on these. Love the boats. Very, very interesting. Uh, here's the back of it. Uh, lots of kiln grit, which you often see on these. Uh, but beautiful quality cobalt. Nice dark blue cobalt on this. Quite attractive. And uh, it brought $393. And I thought that was a perfectly good price and someone got a nice plate. Now this is something that's coming up um, that I, I had put in the newsletter, this photograph. And I was, I, I was wondering how they would do. I love old photographs of China. These were done around 1890. The seller had a whole bunch of them up. This was the interior of a, uh, of a temple with the uh, immortals lined up, bronze immortals, and this lovely lobed, um, uh, probably on Wali table with um, offering bowls on top of it and this nice pair of Famille Rose vases. Really interesting picture. And uh, he had a bunch of them. And this went for $327. And he had others here, the rest of them. Uh, some very good ones, um, uh, this one in particular. These are all Buman uh, photos and they were large. I think they were you know, 11 by 14, something in that area. So they're certainly frameable. <clears throat> Great looking art. Chinese photographs have come way up, way up in value, I can tell you. Um, these photographs um, 25 years ago could have been bought in a box of 10 for probably $20. They, people weren't buying them, they are now. Early Chinese photography is going to become a big thing, as we saw with the uh, photo auction that uh, I believe it was Christie's had a few months ago. Uh, the, the, the famous photographers of China's and early photography did very well. And then we had this rather nice uh, stamp worked and uh, modeled, uh, molded uh, Jin Dynasty Celadon incense burner. Uh, this was a nice example. It had good quality, good looking glaze on it. You can see they stamped the flowers into it and so forth running around it. There's the bottom of it. This is a good, a good thing. This looked like a really nice, legit thing. Uh, it went for $810, which I think was a very reasonable purchase. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm glad somebody got a good buy. Uh, th that's a nice piece. And uh, the same seller also had up this uh, very attractive Amber Glaze Liao Dynasty uh, saucer or plate. It was about six inches in diameter. Um, very nice color, though. God, this had beautiful, like a hair's fur uh, coloration to it running out from the center. Here are the spur marks from the firing. There's the bottom of it, kind of grungy, the way you want to see it. And uh, it did fine. This was a good piece for a collector. I, I like this as much as the incense burner. And it went for $402, which I think is pretty reasonable. It's a nice piece. It's a, a good amber glazes uh, come along once in a while. You want to look, check for the color. It's always about the color with amber glazes. And then there was this. This was Kangxi 0219 uh, had this. This was a 
rather attractive. He labeled it 18th century. It could be early 19th, hard to date. Uh, dragon uh, Celadon with, with a, you know, incise decoration of the dragon. Here's the back of it with the uh, blackened ink foot on it. There's that. And uh, it did fine. It did it, no complaints. It brought $1,133, but it was a good, solid looking Celadon. And it did have a dragon on it. And everybody loves dragons. So there you go. Uh, next up was the uh, Kangxi uh, Bowl. Um, you don't see many big Kung Shi bowls like this. These, these, this big Wu Tai bowl or Femi Ver bowl. Uh, love the coloration on it. Uh, love the, here's the bottom of it. Nice stout foot from the period, probably done around 1700 or so. Um, there's a side shot of it. This uh, very nice glaze, beautifully done all the way around. And uh, it was in nice condition. It had a couple of small chips on the rim. They were actually close, I think they were closer to Fritz than chips, but they were really minor. And it brought $1,998. Excuse the phone. And then on to this. This was this, this very attractive uh, transitional period uh, sleeve vase or, or roll wagon. And uh, what was unusual about it was this type of script that ran down the sides. Um, I think a lot of people must have run to their Butler um, collection reference books to look this one up. It had the very typical uh, leaf outline on one side with a painted panel. Um, there it is, there's a mark down here. Nice looking piece. And uh, apparently people liked it a lot. It brought $6,610. So uh, off it goes. And uh, then there was this, this mug caught my eye. I liked this a lot. This was done very much in the Sung style, this ink, this ink drawing that was popular with the literati crowd back then, especially in the Northern Sung. They painted uh, you know, black ink paintings with uh, sort of very academic outdoor landscapes with, um, in the style with the mist through the clouds, as you see here. And uh, no easy trick to pull off on a piece of porcelain. And, uh, it did, and it was also fully inscribed, and it did very well. Here's the mark on the base. Uh, a lot of people love this. It was dated 1954, and it brought $1,978. That just shows you how vibrant this uh, 20th century ceramics market is getting. It's really coming on. And uh, then we had this uh, beautiful uh, Kangxi uh, bottle vase uh, from uh, Serfair. He's a good seller. He gets nice things. This is a silver-mounted example. Um, good quality all the way around. Uh, nice silver mounts on it, probably obviously done in Europe. They love putting silver mounts on things. And it did very well, $849, nothing to complain about there. And he also had this, this very attractive rose water bottle. I like rose water bottles. I've had a lot of them over the years. They're just interesting form. And this one, they had mounted it with silver here and here. Now, you don't never know until you get it whether or not this silver was done to, to, to mend a break in the, in, in when the neck got broken off. These often, they're very prone to breaking for obvious reasons. And uh, here's a picture of the bottom. Notice it had a nice brown dressing on the foot, very neatly done, the classical Kangxi foot. And uh, the, this did better than the last lot. It brought $969. So there you go. Um, but uh, for the Kangxi collector, they, they love these things, especially in Europe. Uh, this was one of the little bargains of the week. For if you're, if you're sort of new to collecting, we threw it in because it, it was a nice, honest example, uh, uh, sort of a Canton pattern done what they often refer to these as guglets, this form with this uh, garlic neck uh, affair up here. Uh, so if you cap the bottle with a piece of cloth and you put a string around it, it would hold it in place. Um, quite attractive. Here's the bottom of it. Nice looking little uh, piece. Some, a lot of iron there in the, in the paste when it was fired. But there's the uh, top of it again. In nice condition. It went for nothing, uh, basically. It went for $150. So uh, somebody, I hope, got a, a, the, gets the newsletter got that. That was a good, a good little bottle. And it was about, uh, I think, about 10 inches tall. And this is one of the more unusual things of the week. And I hope you stop to take a look at it. A lot going on with it. This is a very unusual export fan for a couple of reasons. One is it's Famille Rose decorated. You don't see that very often with gilding. Uh, very nice, but what you, you didn't realize was that it had later been remounted or refitted in, in with the European fan above it on the sticks up above. Um, very unusual fan. Really, if you're a fan collector, this was a doozy. So you have a Chinese fan, Chinese lacquered fan, and then it was extended off with a European watercolor um, done probably in the early, uh, it looks, uh, this, the, the watercolor looks like it was probably an 18, taken off of an 18th century fan and mounted onto this. 
but uh, wonderful quality. This gilt work up here that they did in Europe was also very, very good. And uh, it went, I think, pretty reasonably, $1,158 for a highly unusual thing, uh, a great thing for a collector. And uh, then we had uh, this bronze. We had it featured for some reason. The photographs are, are gone now. Um, they already were taken down. But this was a ra really nice sort of late Ming uh, uh, seated uh, court figure, um, beautifully cast. It was a nice size, too. And it went for $12,766. All right. And then this was the one that they, we had mentioned the seller uh, before, the fellow that had the, the coral red cups also had this up. This was that really pretty Daoquan uh, Famille Rose uh, teapot uh, with the sh lovely shaped handle, beautiful white porcelain on it. Here's the other side of it with horses and uh, uh, flowering bushes and so forth. There's the, there's the mark. And uh, it did really well. We we I, we thought it would, but uh, it did it did really well. Ten thousand one hundred dollars. Uh, nice example. All right. And this is something that's still up. This is this ends this weekend or either ends tomorrow. I'll check it in a second here. Either ends tomorrow or Sunday. Nice looking transitional blue and white uh, uh, ewer. Um, it ends on Sunday. It's up to twenty one hundred and five dollars. It's a nice example. It's got some fritting on the. Uh, on the back of the handle right there as you can see which is pretty typical on these the especially on the elbows and on the corners and the edges of transitional pieces pieces they tend to get fritz but that's a nice looking pot and this is also up is this nice looking Juan Wally probably um, uh, brush pot uh, nice looking pot a lot of good uh, legitimate where was the bottom of it there it is uh, nice looking pot it's up to six hundred and ten dollars it ends Sunday all right, so if you collect uh, brush pots, you might want to check that out. All right, we'll finish up the newsletter today. Um, there's a, still a number of things on here that, that close Sunday and Monday, and one of them is um, uh, uh, Josh Chamberlain. Uh, where is he? Here he is, Juice1499. He has a big sale ending Monday, 275 lots. He, he, he caught a hold of me. Originally, it was going to be 250, and I guess he added an extra 25. But you can come here and check it out. He's got some nice things. He's getting some uh, uh, very good interest on a number of things. He's some Famille Rose and also some very, very good Japanese cloisonne. If you like Japanese cloisonne, check out uh, Juice's sale uh, on the site or just go to eBay and check. All right, his, his username is Juice1499. All right, and that's it for the week. Have a great weekend and um, uh, enjoy yourself. Summer's here finally on the island. And uh, we're looking forward to it. All right. Bye-bye, everyone.